guys, it's Emma again with another case for you. It's the case of Hannah Foster, the 17-year-old British student who was abducted after a night out. So let's get into the case. Hannah Claire Foster was um, an A-level student. She lived in Southampton and she was about to study medicine at university. And she lived with her parents, Hilary and Trevor, and her younger sister, Sarah. Now on the 14th of March 2003, she went out socialising with her friends, as she did quite often, into downtown Southampton, visiting both The Hobbit and nearby Sobar. Now at around 10.30, I think her friend had decided she wanted to go home and she caught the bus on Portswood Road. But while, she, while Hannah decided she wanted to just walk home the 800 metres back, and it was dark and she was walking along the road on her own, when... A sandwich delivery van noticed Foster on the darkened streets and abducted her as she passed his vehicle. So Foster's parents, um, when I say Foster, I'm talking about Hannah, Hannah Foster. Hannah's parents noticed that she'd not come home at around 5am in the morning. And by 10.30, after calling a lot of her friends to work out where she was, um, the police were informed. So the initial investigation focused on her prepaid mobile phone, which was still active at this point. They were able to trace some movements um, around the Southampton area uh, using the signal towers. And they managed to find that at a recycling plant, her phone and bag had been dumped in a bottle recycling bin. Now, three days later, on the 16th of March, Hannah Foster's body was found dumped in bushes on Arlington Lane by a passerby. A post-mortem examination revealed that she'd been strangled, she'd been raped and the semen found on her clothes did not match anyone on their database. So they traced her phone calls and while driving along the M27 secretly tried to make a 999 call to emergency services at 11 p.m. in the hope that they would realize that you know she was in trouble and she needed help but unfortunately there there was no direct communication with the operator and the voices were so indistinct the call was just treated as a probable misdial investigators then enhanced the recording and were able to learn that while she was in the back of the van the driver uh, had been South Asian in accent and after identifying several va seven vans on CCTV footage that might have taken this similar route a public appeal for information was made by the parents via a program called Crime Watch in the UK. So a supervisor at Hazelwood's Foods did say that this gentleman had been one of their company's drivers and could have been a possible suspect. He did take the van home on a night time he didn't have his own vehicle and he did have a similar delivery route. He did have a fresh scratch on the side of his face and was unable to complete his shift the following day. So investigators, they noticed that this same van on, was on their shortlist and soon after blood and semen were found in this vehicle and retraced its route in and around Southampton and back to the recycling centre. So now, I, now identified by investigators as their prime suspect, it was soon revealed that this Kaholi had already travelled from Heathrow to Delhi on the 18th of March to visit, apparently, his comatose mother. So finding his house vacated, they also interviewed his wife, took a DNA from his son's and um, his wife in the, was a UK citizen and his brother... Uh, policeman in India. However, they denied any involvement in the murder. So the case was stalled then for 15 months after police in India were not able to prioritise the crime and media attention was pretty low. So Foster's parents, Hannah's parents, went over to India themselves to make a public appeal for information of his whereabouts and during this 10-day visit the Fosters held a series of press conferences as well as a telephone hotline set up. So this got quite a nationwide interest in the press, in Hampshire, in India and in the Sun newspaper. And they had a five million um, Indian um, currency for anyone, a reward for anyone with any information that led to the arrest of this man. So there's various tip offs um, 
and he was arrested by an off-duty policeman in West Bengal's Darjeeling district. He'd been wake, working there for the Red Cross and apparently was just about to try and board a bus from Kalimpong to Nepal with his new wife. He doesn't waste any time. While in custody, he stated that he was tired of running and he did admit to murdering and raping Hannah in the interview with the private television channel and said that he was forced to kill her, raping her because she refused to rep not to report his crimes. He then retracted his statement in 2004, um, saying that it was not by his will and he was then pending extradition to the UK. He underwent 100 court proceedings, 35 appeals and after three years of wrangling a final decision was made to extradite him back to the UK and was handed over to the government in 2007. On the 28th of July, he arrived at Heathrow and was arrested and charged with the murder, kidnap and rape of Hannah. He was also charged with manslaughter, false imprisonment and perverting the course of justice. He entered a plea of not guilty to the charges at Winchester Crown Court. He initially argued he simply found someone had broken into his van and dumped Foster's body, Hannah's body there, causing him to panic. And he later agreed, after DNA evidence was produced, that criminals had forced him to rape and murder her. On the 25th of November 2008, then aged 41, with two wives, was found guilty of all charges and sentenced to life imprisonment, with a recommended minimum term of 24 years but he'd already served two years in the UK on remand. So Hannah's family expressed their disappointment in the sentence and hoped that the killer would spend the rest of his life in prison, but they didn't get exactly what they hoped for. He's expected to remain in prison until at least 2030, and at that age he will be 63. That was another case for you today, the case of... Hannah Foster, 17-year-old British student who was abducted after a night out. I'll be bringing you some more content soon. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening. Bye.